Well, I tell you what, we have an absolutely perfect Midwestern afternoon for football, and EA Sports brings you coverage of the NFL from Paul Brown Stadium in Cincinnati. The enthusiasm of this Cincinnati crowd in full effect a moment ago as their Bengals took the field to the delight of this sold-out crowd. And they're all set as they'll match up with the Jacksonville Jaguars. This is Joe Mixon, fourth in the NFL in rushing last season. And he will take it on in for a Bengals touchdown. Joe Mixon, 75 yards. And they are able to strike first here on their opening drive. Wow, first play in the game, CD, 75 yards. These people, they haven't even filed in yet from the tailgate lots. Everyone talks about starting out fast. Everyone talks about getting explosive type plays. That was absolutely a thunderbolt. And on the defensive side, he spent all week scheming, all week preparing, and it seems like it goes right out the window. Now Bullock will send this one away after the touchdown. This will be fielded at the six. Then he'll take this across the 25. A couple extra yards up to the 27-yard line. Jacksonville's offense coming back onto the field. Let's go back and revisit that week six game against New Orleans. A cool thing that happened is that the Jags honored the top 25 players in the team's 25 years of existence at halftime. Hard to believe that they've been around 25 years. But Tony Baselli, Fred Taylor, Jimmy Smith highlighted the list. And they could have used all three of them because the offense really struggled, as well as Mark Brunel, who had to be the quarterback on that team. But here's a group that I think can get back into the race in their own division with their upcoming schedule. They go to Cincinnati. They're home against the Jets. Despite the fact the Jets beat Dallas, I still think that they'll be favored in that one. And then they have a home game in London against the Texans, who currently lead the AFC South. I think they win the first two. That third one, if they win that one, they can be off to the races. Well, if they win all three, they'll be back above 500 at five and four. Give them 14 on that one and a first down couple of very nice carries to start this drive out. Yeah, two first downs. And how about that second one? What a nice run on that particular play. I'm telling you, they're going to start to think that this game is easy if they continue to rip off yardage like this. Fournette, a first down carry. And the second wave of tacklers is going to get him as they stop him behind the line. It's a loss of four there, bringing up second down. There is no doubt that Geno Atkins is really strong and stout at the point of attack, but I love his suddenness, the ability to make plays, to be in one spot, and then he's gone. And into the offensive backfield, he's a heck of a player. And there, a big TFL tackle for loss. Hard to believe that his father, Gene Atkins, was an NFL defensive back. He's bred this big defensive tackle. One thing to keep in mind, partner, especially in the second half, when you've got a running back of this size, of these dimensions, I can just tell you, attrition does set in for a defense because you're excited about hitting him in the first half. Maybe not so much in the second half as some of these shorter gains turn into bigger runs later. And he's taken down, trying to do a little too much, getting outside of the pocket, and it results in a sack. Getting the sack, the big D tackle, Geno Atkins. Well, they went with a nickel. They throw in an extra defensive back. Coverage was very good. Yeah, it was exactly as you would expect. A passing down, you bring in the nickel package. Just as you described, the coverage was excellent and allowed one of their linemen to end up getting to the quarterback. And that hits at the six and carries into the end zone for a touchback. 
Out come the Cincinnati Bengals again, and they are 0-6 for the first time since 2008. It's been a struggle, obviously, to start the season for them, CD. To put it mildly, and they got such great momentum in their last game because they jumped out to a 7-0 lead because they returned the opening kickoff 92 yards. Brandon Wilson thought they got him jump-started, but the offense, they struggled the rest of the way. Three under heavy pressure, and down goes Dalton on the sack. Avery Jones making his presence felt on the sack. Great job defensively. I think he was trying to go through his progressions, find someone to get rid of the football. Before he knew it, he was on his back. So that just brings us right back to what you said in the beginning. A great job defensively. Nowhere to go with the football. That led to the sack. Off the play fake to Mixon. This is Dalton. Pressure gets to him, and down he goes. Back at the four-yard line. Calais Campbell finding his way home for the sack. All right, let's go ahead and detail this situation here. Third and long coming up. Back near your own goal line. I would be very hesitant about throwing the football in this situation. Maybe just run, run up the middle. Yeah, I think that that might be the spot for them. you got to try and find some space for your punter because you don't want him backed up where he has to alter what he does. On the screen, Bernard. And they'll hit him for a loss as he's back to his two-yard line. Losing four yards that time, and now it's fourth down. Well, you can see what they wanted to do. They wanted to set up the screen there, but it got blown up. It's hard to run that play if you're not getting a lot of pressure at the quarterback because the space doesn't open up. They were able to read that one and slow it down and stop it before they could get a first down. Just a two-yard return there following a punt of 48. And the Jaguars go on offense, first down and 10. And out now comes Jacksonville as they get ready to go. And hoping to do better than they did their last possession when they punted the football. Appeal to the vanity of your offensive line. Tell them that they control your fate. Leverage guys, win the line of scrimmage. If you do that, you start to win first down. You win second down. And guess what? You start accumulating first downs. And that's what they need in order to not punt the ball again. They'll start out here with a jet sweep. And that will cover beautifully. Their defenders stayed home and they'll stop him behind the line. I like the idea to mix it up from time to time because let's face it, you can't be predictable. But the execution was a little lacking on this one, right? They might want to go back to the drawing board with that call. A loss of a yard there to start out. That leads to a second and 11. Off play action, it's Minshew. He'll get that to devalve the tight end. The catch and run there, good for 16 and a first. I like how they work the tight end on a nice little under route there. And if you're going to give him that much space, he's not even going to catch the football. He's going to run away from you a little bit. And that's exactly what he just did there, picking up extra yardage. So here's a first and 10 at the 38. Throwing on first down is Minshew. He's got the hook up with Conley. And he's brought down at the 34. Call it a gain of four. Four yards on that last completion, so that sets up second and six. Minshew sets to throw. And he's going to go down. They get to him back at the 40. Geno Atkins able to get in there for his second sack of the afternoon. And no matter what the situation, the O-line just hates that because they feel like they didn't protect little brother back there, right? Man, that's just so difficult for them because just think about every single play. When you decide to throw the football, you're dealing with some of the best athletes on the planet. You talk about guys, if they weren't playing football, they'd be starting in the NBA at power forward. It's a really difficult task. Now a shot taken on third down, but it's going to wind up incomplete. Well, that certainly looked like something that they discussed all week in practice, getting ready for this one. Take the big shot right out of the gate. At worst, you'll open up the defense a little bit, loosen them up, and have them back on their heels. And he missed it. It's no good. And this score will stay right where it is. Well, this winds up an empty possession. Everything looked okay. He just never got the ball on target. And knowing him, he'll be disappointed with that effort. Please, 
Well, now they'll start three yards shy of midfield after that long 57-yard miss. Here's Joe Mixon as they start on the ground. He'll get three up to midfield. What's the old expression, three yards in a cloud of dust? In this case, it's dust-covered pellets. It's no longer that old grass that we used to play on right and chew it up. Now we've got that artificial surface. You see the pellets go up. Still a nice play by the defense. From midfield here, Dalton gets it to his running back, Bernard. They'll get nothing out of that one, and it's going to lead to a third down. He steps out of bounds right at the line of scrimmage. They had the catch on second down, but it didn't help at all, and now they're looking at third down here. Out of the gun, it's Dalton. And that is incomplete. We've already seen him catch a few passes out of the backfield in the first half, unable to connect on that one. Certainly seems like getting him the ball out of the passing game, though, is part of their game plan. It certainly is because he catches it well, creates a mismatch. You're going to cover him with a linebacker, a corner, a safety. They feel like he can win every battle. Punting now is Huber as he sends it away. And this will be out of bounds at the what here? The 12-yard line. Out comes the Jaguar offense now as they get set to take over. Last time out, they had that long 50-plus yard field goal that they missed. And I'm sure on their sideline, they're thinking to themselves, okay, do we still want to try one if we're in that position again? And I would dare say that the answer would be yes. They're going to have a lot of confidence in their kicker. But just to be on the safe side, I'm sure they told their offensive guys, can we get a little bit closer yeah, this time? Closer. Yeah, well, you know, I'd rather get in the end zone first and foremost. But if all else fails, less of a field goal attempt for him. Just a yard on the catch there. It'll be second and nine. One thing you're hoping for when you run drag routes, you're able to hit a receiver in stride, and he can pick up a lot of yardage after the catch. But in this situation, the defense was effective, able to stop him before you get a good head of steam going. They only got a yard out of that last completion, and that makes this second and nine. Open his swain, the tight end. And he'll get this up to the 30-yard line. That one good for a first down pickup of 18 yards. One of the advantages of zone defense, as I remember it, is being able to see the play develop in front of you. One of the disadvantages, when they find those levels where they can hit you with it, sometimes behind the corner and in front of the safety, it makes it tough to defend. A pretty nice work defensively there on the first down run as they hold him to a gain of a couple. Two yards on the carry there. It'll be second down. They tried a quick hitter inside, but that one was swallowed up because what they're hoping, those big defensive linemen will take the bait and move laterally and open up a crease that they can run through. Didn't happen on that play. On second down, here's Fournette. They follow up the gain of two with a gain of one that time. I know that speed is the hallmark of today's NFL game, but the key to good rushing defense is still having your linebackers set the edge. Minshew throwing on third down. The open man is Shark. It's complete. A 14-yard first down pickup for the Jaguars. Two first downs have him up near midfield now on first and ten. Minshew, first and ten. Caught here by Conley. And he's able to get this one down to the 40-yard line. The Jags picking up the first down there, a gain of 12. You can see the time and effort and thought that they put into their passing game because it was evident right there. It looks like a simple pitch and catch. But you and I both know that they have planned for this and worked hard to make it happen. Now Leonard Fournette and an alley to run. And brought down, but not before they're inside the 25. 16 yards that time on the pickup for the Jags and a first down. Well, they came into this game saying it was important that they set the tone and show that they can run the football. And I believe that they've done that here in the first quarter. Ready, break. Now, 
Now Minshew on first and ten. That one complete. He finds Shark. And down inside the 15, shy of the 10. That one good for a gain of 13 for Jacksonville and a first down. Now that was pretty. They executed that curl route versus zone coverage, and that changes things a little bit because against man, it's often a tight curl, a tight, a sharply run route. Against zone, you're just looking for that open spot, that dead area, so you may curl it a little bit wider just to get to that place. And usually a tight window. He fired a bullet in there for the completion. Now here's a pass on first down that's knocked away and incomplete. It's always a battle. Who's going to win on first down, the offense or the defense? Let's face it, if you've got the ball, four yards or more on first down is what you're aiming for. They tried to throw for it there. Nice effort to knock that one away and bring up second down. They go back to the ground now with Fournette. And he'll be brought down right on the edge of the goal line at about the one-yard line. They'll wind up getting 10 back as that sets them up for third down. After one, seven nothing on EA Sports. The Jags with the football to begin the second quarter as they've got it with a third down in less than a yard. The offense on third down tonight, just one for three thus far. They're looking at third and a few inches. They'll try and run for it with Fournette. And that one going nowhere from the start as he's met in the backfield and goes backwards. Call it a loss of two on the play. And that'll bring up fourth down. So out comes a field goal team now for the second time here today. This a chip shot, a 20-yarder. The kick by Lambeau is good. And they are on the board, but still trailing. It's 7-3. A dozen plays on that drive that ends with the field goal. Let's go ahead and break out some of the old chestnuts here, right, partner? Keep the ball in front, rally to it, and make the tackle. Right? No big plays given up. No balls over your head. Bend. Don't break. Hold on, hold on. Chestnuts? Ah, uh, you like Come that on. one? What does that mean, break out the, just because you break, you break chestnuts? I, I'm not sure about that, but I'm just going with why they said that. I have no idea. Now after the made field goal, back out Lambo to kick this one off. This is fielded at the goal line. And he'll get across the 20 before he's brought down at about the 23-yard line. Now the Cincinnati offense ready to see what they can do here. They've got the lead. Last time had to punt it, though. What's the key to this drive? I think it's leverage. Ah, the leverage. big guys up front. You know the motivational speech on the sideline is, guys, give us an opportunity. Protect the passer, create space for our runners, and let's go ahead and get these guys. Low man wins. Let's go do it on this drive. <laughs> we'll watch that leverage on this drive. And down he goes, but he takes it up to the 40. Give him 17 and a Cincinnati first down. And the game just keeps evolving. Big guys running those corner routes, so difficult to cover. So quickly, all the way up at the 40-yard line. Dalton sets up play action. He gets this one to Boyd. And they'll get this well past midfield before being stopped just before the 35. 23 yards on the play. Not only have they completed a couple on this drive, but they peeled off some pretty good chunks of yardage, too. Absolutely. Great start. Two nice plays in the pass game. Now can they continue to feed off that? Here's Dalton. Under heavy pressure, and down goes Dalton on the sand. Yannick Ngakwe in there to get him. It's a loss of five. There's a little bit of defense right there. Nickel set, five defensive backs. They just snuffed out every route that was going. Quarterback never got rid of the football. Sacks, a growing theme in this first half. This is second and long. So Dalton now. Oh, the pressure too great, and he goes down once more. 
Josh Allen, he's the one that drops him this go around, and that pass rush getting strong here, back-to-back -back sacks. So the sack, and now it's third and long for Dalton and the Bengals. From the gun, Dalton looks to throw. That's complete, Bernard. It's a gain of five, and that's going to make it fourth down. That's certainly playing down in distance very well by the defense, isn't it? Take whatever you want underneath, by all means. Here's Kevin Huber now, as he's on to punt for Cincinnati. And he's been a busy man here in this first half as he gets it away. And not what he was hoping for there, as this will hit in the end zone for a touchback. Out comes the Jacksonville offense as they get set to take over here. And it's been very much a slow start for them. Three drives and just the three-point CD. Yeah, if you're into the points-per-drive ratio, that answer is one. And that's not going to get it done in a ball game. They've got to find a way to finish these drives in end zones, not having balls go through goalposts. A pass complete here to Conley. And he gets this one just shy of the 40. They'll mark him down at the 39. The drive starting play, a good one. Give him 19. I think it all came together there. In breaking route, drove it with excellent pace. Money throw right there to move the sticks. This quarterback now hitting on 80% of his passes in the early going. 8 of 10. It's first down. On the run, it's Fournette. It's a pickup of four, and it'll bring up second down. I call that play a success. A nice inside run sets up a very manageable second down, a very solid gain on that play. The run got four. Now they deal with a second and six. They'll go play action here with Minshew. And on the left sideline, he caught it, but out of bounds, according to the headlinesman. Incomplete, so the ball a little late getting there, and it's third down. Great coverage there all around. Really didn't have many options to throw the football. Very little chance that that one was going to be completed. Every receiver was locked up. The Jaguars on third down. They've only converted once in four tries. This will be third and six. Now Minshew. And a throw there going to be incomplete. Certainly looked like they were getting ready to convert there on third down, but what an effort to get his hand on that one, knock it away, and brings up a fourth down decision. Here's Logan Cook now, as he'll punt it away for the second time. And this is going to hit the goal line and continue on into the end zone for a touchback. Cincinnati now ready to take the field. And right now these guys, they're shuffling a little bit, maybe doubting because three straight drives have ended with him putting the football away. Yes, yeah, so you start pointing fingers at each other a little bit, asking a lot of questions. What are you seeing? What are you getting? Maybe trying to narrow down your playbook a little bit and maybe get simpler rather than more complex in order to try and fashion together a drive. Under heavy pressure and down goes Dalton on the sack. Yannick Ngakwe picks up his second sack of the afternoon. The amount of sacks that they've absorbed in this game is absolutely extraordinary. Let's just face it. This offensive line, flat out, cannot handle this pass rush. It's been demonstrated time and time again. They come up on second and long, and the pass protection just has not been there this afternoon. Now a deep ball there on second down, but it'll wind up incomplete. And Charles got to like what this defense has been able to do these last couple of plays. Yeah, they get the sack on first down, then they force the incomplete pass. Now they're just a play away from getting the football right back, but it's a big play. They've got to hold up. And the Bengals on third down. 0 for 3 to this point. They could use a conversion. This will be third and 19. Here's Dalton. Now they go screen. It's complete. And he'll be a couple yards shy of the 20 at the 18. The screen gets seven, but it's not enough. And it'll be fourth down. Instead of throwing it downfield, Charles, they just tried to dump it underneath there. You like the call? I do. I think it's a high percentage play because you get the completion. And what you're counting on is your back to use his legs and his elusiveness to make people miss and pick up the first down. In this case, it didn't happen. 
And this one will not be returnable as it sails out of Let's bounds. Go. 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 The Jags offense now gets set and heads back onto the field. The crowd may be losing just a little bit of the edge after back-to-back -back punts. They want some big plays. They want to see some offense. They want to see somebody break away, whether it's through the air or oh, on the ground. Now it'll be interesting to see where the patience is on both sides. Each head coach, can you hang in there and not try and force something that could put your team in some jeopardy? A little bit of space there for the first down run as that's going to get him about five yards. It was Nick Vigil there on the stop. Despite the blitz, they're still able to pick up a nice, solid gain. The disadvantage of blitzing often alters the normal spacing and run fix and leaves creases like they were able to exploit right there. Second and five now. Minshew. And this one into the hands of DJ Shark. And he'll be out of bounds, but able to get it up past the 45. A gain of 13. It's a first down. Timing is everything, and they work on this cut all the time. They work on all the timing patterns, and this time it paid off for them. Worked him to the center of the field, cut it to the outside, ball's delivered, gets both feet down for the completion. They'll try the right side here with Fournette. Credit him with a one-yard gain there to make it second and nine. They tried a quick hitter inside, but that one was swallowed up because what they're hoping, those big defensive linemen will take the bait and move laterally and open up a crease that they can run through. Didn't happen on that play. Fournette running out of the gun. And the big boys up front, they're gonna stop him right at the line. Big Geno Atkins there to bring him down. Doubling this guy has to be a priority before moving up to the next level because the big fella, he just ate that one alive, just stuffed it. In fact, before the game, he was talking to us and he's like, hey, these pants make me look fat. And we said, nah, man, you're just a whole lot of guy. He is at well over 300 pounds. He's a big man. Now throwing on third down there, but he cannot connect. It's always a goal, and it's really nice defensively when you can rally to the football and make sure there's enough contact to force an incompletion. Force an incompletion and force another punt. Here's Logan Cook now as he's on to punt for Jacksonville. <laughs> And no return possible here as they angle this one out of bounds. So now the Bengal offensive unit back out onto the field. Now if you're a fan of punting, and I know that not many people are, but this game kind of turning into one for you. Well, it's okay if it's a skills contest, right? We're really into it then, but not during the course of an actual game. This has turned into a field position game, though. Sometimes a better punter may actually determine the outcome. Dalton now to pass. Oh, a battle for it here, and this will be caught. Give him 32 on the play. You know I'm going to lean towards the defender, right? You know I'm going to do that. I know. That's a tough situation for him as I see it. But the truth of the matter is, that ball was not streaking towards him. Had a little arc on it. He's got to find a way to get his head around and make the play on the football. So the big play gets him across midfield now for first and 10. Now a carry for Bernard. Try to find a lane, but instead he'll get back to the line of scrimmage and no more. Calais Campbell on the stop. And as a defensive end, getting off the ball quickly, swarming to the football, making a tackle. That's what we saw right there. Yeah, and that's what their job is. And really, a lot of the time, they have to throttle back a little bit in the run game because you know those defensive ends are like in a sprinter stance. They're just headed straight for the quarterback. That was good recognition on that play to hold them to no gain. The second down play, not much better than the first. Just a gain of one there. And the big fella stuffed that one up in a big way. I think doubling him has to be a priority because you can't move up to the next level if you don't take care of him first. Now the Bengals on third down. Not good. 0 for 4 thus far. This is third and 8. Off the play fake to Mixon. This is Dalton. And Eifert has it. And they're going to be set up down around the 15-yard line. And he's going to have another first down as the tackle's made at the Jaguars' 15-yard line. His position, and he's listed as a tight end, but he certainly doesn't run like one. And that's what we're seeing more and more coming into the league. Those guys who can run, make plays after the catch, and gain that additional yardage. And using that speed there to turn it into a pretty nice little game. 
Throw from Dalton, taken in by Eifert. It's a loss of a yard there, and now second down. And never good on a pass completion there to go the wrong way. Lost yardage. No, for some reason, it seems to work better when you throw it downfield or you can move the ball downfield running it that way, doesn't it? But in this case, if you're the defensive guys, you're energized, executed well, and you caused a lost yardage play. That's going to feel good and look great in film. He's got his man. This is Tate. And on this one, he'll get to the 15, right at the 15-yard line. That catch good for only a yard, and it will be third down. Third down, a shot here for Dalton. And it's going to be incomplete. He was able to catch it there on the right sideline, but out of bounds, says the line judge. And it's going to bring up fourth down. I think that was a good job there defensively. They did allow him to drive all the way downfield, but once they got their backs to the goal line, they really turned up the pressure. Yeah, they let him get all the way down here. Now the field shrinks. They've struggled to convert, and that last incompletion brings up fourth. Bullock's kick is good. And they push the lead up to a touchdown now at 10 to 3. So unable to convert for the touchdown inside the red zone, but they do come away with three. Yeah, it's a 32 yarder. That's essentially an extra point nowadays, right? Because it's 33 as a general rule for these guys. So it should be a simple kick. But you know what's really strange nowadays? When they miss an extra point, I think they carry that with them longer than missing a field goal because an extra point's supposed to be automatic. Absolutely, and I would think even field goals inside of 30 yards, even though they're substantially shorter than a PAT, it, would, it just has a different feel, doesn't it? A different it? feel, a different vibe. That's what I get from all the kickers I talk to. They always say, if I miss an extra point, that's the one that bothers me more. After the field goal now, it's Bullock to kick it away. That'll be taken in the end zone. And no run back here. This will be a touchback, and it comes out to the 25-yard line. Here comes the Jaguars' offense as they get set to go again. Just a lone field goal for them so far, trailing 10-3 as they come up first and 10. Throwing on first down is Minshew. He'll set up the screen to Fournette. A good pick up there on first as the screen pass gets him eight. For a second there, I thought that might break big. Screen pass. Looked like it was coming together. Looked like there was an opening. Still ended up with a solid game. Here's a second and two now from the 33. Here's Minshew. And he completes it to Westbrook. Seven yards there and a first down. A little football 101 there. You just see the receiver try to run down the defender, meaning he goes right at him and really trying to move him a little bit towards the center of the field so he can put his foot in the ground and break to the out to the sideline and make a catch. This quarterback now 11 of 16 through the air. It's first and 10. And now a throw here secured by his running back out of the backfield. And they'll get to him after a gain of seven to the 47. Everyone's got to be able to catch the football. Doesn't matter what position you play, but if you're on offense, be aware a ball may come your way. Now the Jags are moving quickly in the hurry up. Throwing again on second down. Minshew. And that'll be incomplete. Good protection that time, and they couldn't hook up on the long one. Now it's third down. That would have been a great catch, but it was real difficult to hold on to it because it was contested all the way. Would have been a great play if he'd been able to hold that one in. So the incomplete pass on the last play, and that leads us to a third and three. On the draw, this is Fournette. And he gets this one across midfield for the first down to the 46. An effective seven-yard third down conversion. The Jaguar is going to go ahead and use their first timeout as they'll stop it with just over a minute to go before halftime. 
They had yet to run the ball at all on this drive, but third and short, definitely was a great time to dial one up. This offense finding its legs now. Here's another first and ten. From the gun, Minshew to throw. Open his swain, the tight end. Now the Jags will use the second of their timeouts as the stoppage will come with a little under a minute to go in this first half. First and ten. He'll check this one off to Fournette. And they'll bring him down at the 18-yard line. Ten yards on the pickup there, and it'll be second down. And we see another pitch and catch there to the running back. This position just continues to evolve. They become just as critical to the passing attack as a lot of receivers' tight ends because their ability to make people miss in the open field can really generate big plays for an offense. And that ball is caught by D.J. Chark for the Jags' touchdown. D.J. Chark there to make the grab as they are an extra point away now from tying this football game. Little loft on that touchdown pass and sort of dropped it in the breadbasket perfectly. Right in the bucket. And when you're coming out of college and you're a rookie in the NFL, Sometimes you forget about the different types of throws you have to make. You just rely on your fastball and throw it as hard as you can all the time. But in this situation, he understood and threw it in a spot where only his receiver was going to get it and no one else. That was pretty. Extra point tacked on by Lambeau. And that is going to tie our game as we approach halftime. All level now at 10 apiece as the kick's away. This fielded at the two. And he's up across the 25 and down at the 28-yard line. Now this Bengals offensive unit ready to see what they can do here. You've got less than 30 seconds left here in the half. You're well on your own side of the field. What are we doing here, Coach Davis? Well, I'm trying something on first down. And it's something that's safe. It's something that's been done many times before. A lot of people say it's not even worth trying, but I'm running a draw. I'm running a screen. I'm seeing if something pops. And if it does, that can alter my strategy and potentially get me some points. And if it doesn't work, well, then you just run the clock out and go to the locker room. And he's not going to go anywhere as they get him down behind the line of scrimmage. So thanks to the late touchdown, it's a time ball game here heading to break. As we send you down to Orlando where Jonathan Coachman has our EA Sports halftime report. Coach, and ready to get the party started for the second half. It was an even first half, all tied on the scoreboard. And a nice return sets him up pretty good here at the 30-yard line. Out come the Jaguars now as they'll go on offense first here in this third quarter. They have a chance to break our tie here as we get a look at the first drive of quarter three. And it's such a tone setter, isn't it? Because both sides trying to seize momentum to begin the half. What do they have dialed up that'll give them an advantage to move the ball downfield? Let's find out what they have dialed up. Looking to throw it, Minshew. He's got the hook up with Conley. This will be stopped about two yards shy of the marker. Eight-yard gain, second and two. Ready, set. 
Facing a second and two after that last catch, good for eight yards. Now a fake on the give here as they try the run pass option. And he'll be corralled out across midfield down to the 45. The catch and run, good for 18 and a first down. Quarterbacks love slant routes because the receivers are breaking right into their line of vision. And receivers love them as well because they're getting the ball on the move and able to catch it and try and get upfield and gain additional yardage. A shotgun give to Fournette. It was Jordan Evans making the play defensively. Well, we saw him there trying to get it to the outside, trying to get to the perimeter, but not a whole lot of room there. But there's got to be one positive to that. If you keep moving laterally, creases tend to develop as the game moves on, and they can run it back inside later. Watch the screen. Watch the screen. Watch the screen. They'll run it again with Fournette. And nowhere to run on the interior of that defensive line. He'll get back only to the line of scrimmage. Geno Atkins, the pro bowler, in there on the stop. What an advantage having a elite guy in the middle of the defensive line because not only does he take up the space and let the linebackers run free, but he can also make plays himself, as we just saw there. On third down, Fournette. And he's going to be stopped here at the 43, and that is not near enough to pick up the first. Just a one-yard pick up there, and it'll be fourth down. Here's Logan Cook now, as he'll punt it away for the fourth time today. He's averaging just under 50 yards a punt as he gets this away. And a bit of a mistake there. This is well into the end zone for a touchback. So here are the Bengals now as they get their first possession of this second half. Their defense did its job, yielded no points. Now it's the offense's turn. And how much fun is that when you set things up to start a half and you just tell you guys, hey, if you can shut them down, get it back for our offense, we can roll. And they played out perfectly. Now, can the offense do what they wanted to do at the half, which is find those weaknesses and now attack them and score some points. And break this tie. Yannick Ngakwe in on the stop. Well, he's looking for some running room, and there wasn't a whole lot of it there on that play. I think he was lucky to get a couple yards out of it because those defenders, they were rallying to the football pretty quickly. From the 22, here's second and eight. Now Dalton. Got his man, it's Eifert. That one good for the completion percentage, but no gain. It'll be third down. Pass complete, but no gain. No yards. Yeah. So you file that as unsuccessful. Yeah, you do, don't you? Except on the stats, throwing the ball. You get a completion. You get a catch. Yeah. But still, no yardage. Okay. They had the catch on second down, but it didn't help at all. And now they're looking at third down here. Now on third down, that pass knocked down in the backfield and incomplete. It was Quincy Williams with a tight coverage there. Didn't have a receiver open downfield, and as it turned out, couldn't even find his outlet, man, because of the coverage. It was way too tight, unable to find anyone open. Here's Kevin Huber now, as he's on for the fifth time here today. And he deserves a bronze leg as he gets this one away. It's taken to the 26. That's a 49-yard punt. Eight, though, on the return. And the offense will take over with a new set of downs. Here comes the Jaguars' offense as they get set here. And a tight game after punting last time. See if they can get something going on this drive. As they head to the field now with the game this close, You've got to feel there's a sense of urgency for them going on offense right now. But they have to do it without letting panic creep in and affect their play. They're throwing to start the drive, but that one incomplete. D.D. Westbrook, his intended receiver. And now it's second down. Well, we got a second. Let's look ahead to week seven and what's on the slate. Uh, things start out Thursday night. Kansas City at Denver, divisional battle. Oh! Suddenly an interesting game. Kansas City having lost their last two in Denver now playing defense as we expected. But how about the NFL 100 game of the week? Oakland at Green Bay, a rematch of Super Bowl II. Also have New Orleans at Chicago and Philly visiting Dallas on Sunday night. That is a huge one in the NFC East. Yeah, both teams 3-3. Three and three. The winner will have the lead in that division. 
Good throw, good catch, but I really like the route. The drag and being able to run away from defenders, hard to stick with them for that long. Yeah, better against man than zone or... Better against man because now you're running away from someone and you're not running into a defensive player in another zone. And able to find Conley. Touchdown, Jaguars! Chris Conley, 61 yards, and the Jaguars have taken the lead. As a former DB, you might not like to see that, but from a wide receiver's perspective, those are the plays they dream of. Correct on both counts, all right? Because once he took off, I mean, let's face it, that should have been done in big sky country. There aren't any speed limits out there, and off he went. Glad I wasn't the one trying to chase him. Point after by Lambeau, up and good. And that makes it a 17-10 score. To the touchdown he'll kick this one away this is fielded a couple yards deep and the decision to come out is going to cost him five as he's taken down right at the 20. the Bengals getting set to go these guys had to punt their last possession and that's become too familiar of a refrain too many of these drives just wound up going nowhere but you know how in baseball when the pitcher gets a base hit and he's on base they bring his jacket out to him to keep him warm a lot of times the punter goes to the sideline and puts on sweatpants or a wrap over his leg to keep it warm he might need a massage from the trainer right now from all the work he's getting they run on first down as they're able to get this forward for about four yeah, give him four yards there it'll be second and six tough running there that's a hard earned four yards yeah those are the unsung kind of runs they don't fill up the stat sheet but they do set you up in good position on second down they'll come up second and six now from the 24 Andy Dalton throwing middle but it's incomplete his big tight end Tyler Eifert the intended receiver and it's third down he shook his head right when he released that throw. He knew it was going to be a little off target. Yeah, the excitement got him on that one. Wasn't able to control the fact the receiver was open, and it would have been an easy throw. These guys have punted four times already, and they're staring at a fifth, barring a conversion here on third down. So Dalton now. He's got his man, Boyd. And they get him down, but not before he takes it across the 40-yard line. Give him 17 and a Cincinnati first down. But we're used to seeing the guy that you consider the number one receiver double covered. But how about this guy? He's double covered and finds a way to make the play for a first down. That's how you increase your Madden rating, right? No doubt about that at all. And you know something? I think we'll hear about that from him soon. The former All-Pro Marcel Darius brings him down. Early down stuff to put this offense in a precarious position. We know that securing the point of attack, especially against the big-bodied guys in the middle of this D, has got to be priority one. Again, here's Bernard. Pretty good running there, nine yards. Sets up a third and one. I thought that was a good call. Passing situation on second down. They hit him with the draw instead and pick up nice yardage. Yeah, because the draw, they're thinking pass when they see that initially defensively, right? But you know in today's NFL, most of the time on second and long when it's a passing situation, pass rushers are on the field and only thinking one thing, get to the quarterback. And oftentimes you can bypass him with a running play. And they'll get him down as he's inside the 40. It's a Bengal first down, a pickup of 11. Running lanes were at a premium in the first half, but he's able to find some room there, and he's hoping that that's a precursor of a big second half. So from the 39 now, they'll come up on a first and 10. Dalton with a give here to Mixon, and he'll take this one down to the 36. Miles Jack there to make the tackle. 
They tried a quick hitter inside, but that one was swallowed up because what they're hoping, those big defensive linemen will take the bait and move laterally and open up a crease that they can run through. Didn't happen on that play. Dalton sets up play action. He gets this one to Boyd. And they're going to be set up down around the 15-yard line. That one, a gain of 20 and a first down. Andy Dalton now, five straight completions here in this second half, first and 10. Now Joe Mixon. And they get to him quickly here as he stopped right around the 13. Give him three on first down. It'll set up a second and seven. Well, that's not a run that's going to make any of the highlight tapes, but they've been moving it well all game on the ground. This is another one that keeps them moving forward. Again, it's Mixon. A nice display of powerful running, but it takes him only to the seven. He's dropped there. A gain of three last play. This time they double it and pick up six. You know what really fires up offensive linemen? When the guy that is carrying the ball behind them can create his own space and break a tackle along the way. Third and two for Dalton. And that is caught. He's got it for a Bengal touchdown. Giovanni Bernard there to make the grab as they are an extra point away now from tying this football game. They went empty backfield, all their weapons out wide, so there, were, there really was no secret here to what they were going to do. No secret, but they still had to execute it, and they still had to protect the guy throwing the ball because oftentimes when you empty the backfield, people bring pressure at you. They manage to hold in there and successfully complete the touchdown pass. Extra point up and good by Bullock, and that will level the playing field at 17 all. Seventeen, seventeen. the score. All even to this point as the kick's away. This is taken at his four. And a good return as he'll be stopped just shy of the 30-yard line. The Jaguars' offense now heads back onto the field. After the long touchdown drive we just saw, you wonder if maybe that's taken a little of the wind out of this offense's sails because they had it going pretty good last time, too. Had to sit over there for a little while, didn't they? You know, they were eager, amped up to get back on the field after just scoring, hoping to get the ball back quickly. That didn't happen, so I'd say come out, just kind of get started again. You know, it doesn't have to be anything dramatic. Just get moving, get loose again, and see if they can get it downfield. No gain on the play. It'll be second down they've called his number a lot this afternoon you wonder how much tread is left on those tires we certainly do but i always think back to one of my favorite coaches in the nfl and he used to have a meeting with his running backs every year in the offseason and say look as many times as you're going to carry the ball you should be able to carry it one more time so make sure you get in shape they try to throw on second down but this one is incomplete jeff swain the intended receiver and now it's third down before the game, they were running the route tree about as efficiently and effectively as we could have possibly imagined, but sometimes the passes just go awry. Yeah, let's face it. When you're running the route tree in pregame, you don't have defenders breathing down your neck. You don't have defensive backs making plays on the football. Hard to replicate the intensity of the game in pregame. And now the third down throw incomplete as well. They went with the dive look that time on defense, just flooded the field with defensive backs, blanketed everyone, took away all the passing angles, thus the incompletion. Here's Logan Cook now as he's on to punt for Jacksonville. A 
And that'll be put in the books as a 53-yard punt. And the Bengals will take over here first and 10. The Bengals offense now, they head back onto the field. The last possession, these guys were able to tie the game with a touchdown, and now they'll have a chance to move out in front. Yeah, let's give a big assist to the defense who got the ball back. The special teams went out there, handled things. They've got it. They've got momentum. I know they're eager to get out there and put it on display. They'll begin here with Bernard. And a nice run past the 30-yard line there. Just what you want on a first down run. Call it eight yards, and it's second and two. First play of the drive. Let's give credit all around. Excellent blocking, but the guy carrying the ball, he was the finisher. A really nice run. All right. Let's go, Let's go. It's hot. From the 31, Dalton. And that going to be incomplete. A lot of contact, no call, and it's third down. Those passes out that far wide always make you hold your breath a little bit. Felt like it was in the air for a while. What it does is it allows a defender to gain some ground, come from a long distance, and have a chance to affect the pass. After the incompletion, here now, third and two. Here's Dalton. And the catch good. It's Eifert. Dalton to his big target, Eifert, for the Cincinnati first. That was a route run, not just with dexterity, but with intelligence. Found the hole in the zone, made sure the quarterback saw him, and was able to make the sure catch and flip the down marker back to one. Andy Dalton now, a perfect eight for eight to start the second half. Not bad. First and ten. Throwing. Dalton. He finds his running back, Mixon. And he's going to get a solid gain of nine before being brought down. Second and right at a yard. I know most of the time when the ball's in the air, you're thinking wide receiver, tight end, but running backs, they can be a big part of any passing offense nowadays. That last catch short of the marker by just a yard leaves him with a very manageable second and one. Dalton bootlegs out. Rush coming, and he's taken down. So they'll get a little extra time to come up with his third down play as we played three quarters. And that'll do it for the end of the second quarter. This is the NFL, and it's on EA Sports. The Bengals on third down. They've converted five times in their many chances thus far. This is third and nine. And Dalton to throw. And Tate's got it. And he's going to get this all the way down inside the 35. It'll go as a gain of 33, and that play started back at their own 33. I know we love our jobs, and pretty much any play we see, we're pretty, you know, excited about. But big plays, let's face it, that's what we absolutely live for. How about that one? That was great, and what our camera missed was the fist pump from the sideline after that catch. They're fired out. That's a big game. Throwing on first down, but this one winds up to be incomplete. It's a lot of contact going on there, and in the end, unable to keep two hands on the football and bring it into his body. Everything looked pretty good until the finish. From the 34, they'll come to the line on second and 10. Ready? Hey, alert three, alert three. Dalton gives to Bernard. Now that play is blown up, losing yardage back at the 35. <laughs> Officially, it will go as a one-yard loss, and that's going to lead to a third down. Count me as a little bit surprised by what we just saw there because this has been a pretty long drive, and normally you think that wears down a defense. In this case, it looked like the offensive line let him down a little bit. And allowed the penetration and the ability to stuff him for a loss. Dalton now to pass. He completes it to Tate. It's a gain of 20 and picking up the first. Tell you what, he's been able to put the ball in some tight spots all game long. That throw, no different. Yeah, a lot of people would call it a gutsy type of a throw. I think he looks at it as, I can do it, so it's not that big of a deal to me, and I'm going to keep firing. Dalton operating in the red zone now. Nowhere to escape, and he goes down. Yannick Ngakwe getting him once again his third sack of the afternoon. 
This offensive line flat out cannot handle this pass rush. We've seen it demonstrated time and time again to the tune of seven sacks in this game thus far. So that complicates things a bit here. 18 yards to go now on second down. Passing, it's Dalton. Looking left side and he's got a man. That's Willis. Only three yards on the catch. It's third down. In so many ways, throwing the hitch route is actually one of the safer things an offense can do. Get the ball out to the receiver as fast as possible. Hope he's got man-to-man -man coverage and hope that his athleticism wins on the perimeter. Come on. Third and long. What will Dalton dial up? Complete to the right side. It's Eifert. It'll be a gain of 12, but it will also lead to fourth down. And there's another completion to the tight end. And let's face it, it is hard to overthrow a six foot six inch target. It is indeed. Quarterbacks like their speed guys. They like that huge six six target that they've got in him. They really do. And it reminds me of what one great tight end told me once. He told his quarterback, just make sure you throw it up there. You know, kind of like put up on the top shelf where the kids can't get it. And Bullock will put this one through. And with that, they take the lead here 20 to 17. So the drive here ends with a field goal. It does give them the lead, but this one's still certainly a long ways from over. It definitely puts a lot of pressure on your defense to hold the lead, right? They're happy to have it and happy to be out there trying to do so. But I know as a former player, in the back of their mind, they're thinking, why don't you score the touchdown and seal this thing? After the field goal now, it's Bullock to kick it away. That's fielded in the end zone. And he'll elect not to return this one, so they'll bring it out to the 25 on the touchback. And out now comes Jacksonville as they get ready to go. And they're coming off a three and out, my friend. I think they've got to look at that play sheet and go to a spot that they haven't gone before. Time to shake things up a little bit to try and get this offense moving. Okay, so how do you do that? How do you shake things up? You look at what you've called before, realize it hasn't worked Go to so something well, else. And maybe try and find one of those special plays from one of your better players and maybe try and hit something big and get things going in the excitement area. Now the first play of the drive there is incomplete. An incomplete pass leads to second and 10 from the 25. On second and 10, it's Minshew. And oh, he took that in one-handed. What a grab. A good pickup. They get eight, but it's third down now. Gotta love the catch. I think you gotta love the gloves as well. <laughs> yeah, these one-handed catches, that was great. And they're fun. They're becoming a little more ho-hum, hey, hey. aren't they? Yeah, they really are. And I know that it sounds like we're taking credit away from the guys, and we don't mean that at all. They really work hard on this one-handed catch thing. But I think the gloves have to be helping in a big way. The Jags picking up the first down there, a gain of 12. They brought in the heavy set on third down, and that usually means running play. But we have seen them throw out of that formation. And sure enough, they snuck the tight end out on that one, wound up hitting him for a first down. Minshew, first and 10. The open man is Westbrook. 16 yards that time on the pickup for the Jags and a first down. And with that last play, he's now up over that 300-yard mark. And in today's NFL, it almost feels routine. And I hate that when you talk about a 300-yard passing game. To me, 300 yards still signifies excellence, and he's achieved that in this performance. Throwing on first down is Minshew. Open his slam, the tight end. And down to the 20 he'll go before heading out of bounds. Another good gain. That's now 35 yards combined on those last two plays. When this offense can get their tight ends involved, they can move the football. Here, a nice route, able to look it in, and picks up the first down. 52 is the mark, 
From the red zone now, they'll look to throw. That's out to his running back, Fournette. And on this one, he'll get to the 15, right at the 15-yard line. Five yards on the pickup, and it's a second down. Second and five after the five-yard completion on first down. Now Fournette. And now they're inside the 10 as he's brought down at the nine. Seven yards there and a first down. Well, partner, I know this type of running back. I mean, this size, this intensity usually gets better as the game goes on. And I can just tell you from experience, the first few quarters, oh, you're eager. You come running up there, I'm going to tackle this guy. By the fourth quarter, you're coming up and thinking about it. And D-line wearing down fourth quarter. Yeah, that's not a guy they want to see consistently. And he's going to battle his way down right around the two-yard line. It's a good pickup of seven yards, and now they're looking at second and goal. Some good strong running right there. Some power and some explosiveness just about got him into the end zone. From the two now, second and goal. I'm going back to you. I'm going back to you. Look at this, a tight end carry. And he'll take this into the end zone. Touchdown, Jacksonville. Taking it in from two yards out. And once again, the Jaguars are back out in front. Lambeau on for the extra point. And that will make this a four-point game. And Lambeau now, after the touchdown, he'll kick this one away. This fielded at the two. And a nice job there as he gets this one up just shy of the 35-yard line at the 34. Now the Cincinnati offense ready to see what they can do here. And last time they got three points, but it was a chip shot field goal. And when you go to the sideline after a chip shot field goal, maybe the offense not too happy. It's a balancing act, isn't it? Because you're exactly right. They're none too pleased that they didn't punch it in for six points. But they also have to remember they did put points on the board. Three points is three points. And in this league, you take points when you can get them. Not even. Under heavy pressure and down goes Dalton on the sack. Calais Campbell able to get in there for his second sack of the afternoon. And, partner, it's safe to say that the secondary really contributed to that sack. Yeah, nickel set, five defensive backs. They covered everything. Nowhere to go with the football. But my question is, why didn't he throw it away? To try again after the sack. Dalton got his man. It's Eifert. Only three yards on the catch. It's third down. Well, they're unable to convert that into much, but it's never a bad idea to try to get the ball into a tight end of his caliber's hands and see what kind of disruption he can cause. And the Jags with five in the secondary now on third down. Dalton here from the gun. Throw left side complete. That's Willis. And he'll only get this to about the 35. Well short of the line to gain. Just a five-yard pickup, but it leads to fourth down. They didn't get the first down, but I have to say I do like the call. I like what they were trying to do. Try and hit your receiver on the run and see if he can pick it up. Keep it on his feet, get a little rack yardage. Yeah, but a nice job defensively to get to him and keep him short of the first. And a great job on special teams to down it as this will be marked out inside the five-yard line. 
Now, if you're a fan of punting, this game's for you. He's been out there quite a bit. That one may be his best yet. Yeah, he certainly got his leg loose by now. It kind of reminds me of my college football coach, John Majors. He loved the punting game because he liked the positioning, the field position, and he loved to play defense. Oh, well, they go with a tight end carry. And nothing doing. He's immediately taken down at the line of scrimmage. Officially no gain on the play, and it's second down. Really shouldn't be a surprise. It's going to be hard to move people in this situation. You know they're going to bring the pressure defensively. Because I remember playing in these spots, and my coaches always say, don't be afraid to try and create a safety, too. They're going to bring pressure. Throwing on second down, Minshew. And his throw is going to be incomplete. The intended receiver was set to Val. Third down here. Looked like he had a couple of different options as far as who to throw to on that play. And who am I to say this, but I'm not sure he made the right decision. Well, the window of opportunity is always going to be small in the NFL. That's why those quarterbacks who make quick decisions and have quick releases have the most success in this league. Big play coming up. Here's third and ten. I would expect to see some pressure here. A 14-yard first down pickup for the Jaguars. Thanks to that last play, a little more room to operate. First and 10 at the 18. They'll run with Fournette. Give him a couple on the carry there, second and eight. A tight game like this, such a tough spot for the offense to be in, even though they have the lead, Charles, back up so close to their goal line. they got to protect the football. And that's when you have to take care of your team with play calling as well. Not a lot of misdirection, not a lot of counters, not a lot of plays where you have extra ball handling. Get it right to the hands of your running back, tell him to take care of the ball, and try and move forward. Throwing on second and eight. Minshew, DJ Chark, the intended target, and it's third down. This a very important drive, and that incompletion leads to a very important third down here if they're going to try and get the football back. Yeah, getting it back, absolutely crucial to their chances to try and win this game. I would expect a lot of pressure here. They can't afford to let them continue to get first downs and eat away at the clock. They'll go play action here with Minshew. He's got the hookup with Conley. And he'll get this up past the 25 before he's out of bounds. They get seven there, but it brings up fourth. I hate to surrender the football when you're nursing a slim lead, but they're going to have to punt it away. Trust that defense. It's the right play at this stage of the game as well. You don't need to press it here because you do have that little bit of a cushion, and you count on your D to make it stand up. So they're forced to punt on fourth as this one's away. Here comes Erickson. A big kick that time, 52 yards. And that will come the offense as they take over. So now Dalton and the Bengals down 24-20, 2.25 remaining. Plenty of time here. They've got three timeouts and the two-minute warning as they've got it first and 10. So here's Dalton and the Bengals now, first and 10 at their own 27. From the gun, Dalton looks to throw. He'll have a first down past the 40. Throwing right, and that's complete. And all the way up to the 46. 18 yards on that one, and the Bengals are moving. First down. First and ten for Dalton. And he can't get a throw off. He's taken down. What a huge play at this point in the game. Josh Allen in there to drop him as that clock continues to run. Dalton saying, let's get going here, guys, as he rallies him to get set. He'll look to throw. He drops it off for Bernard. Now the Bengals going to use the first of their timeouts as they'll get it with just under 90 seconds remaining.
And the Jags have five in the secondary here on third down. Back to throw. Yeah, that one's going to be knocked away and incomplete. The linebacker, Miles Jack, able to knock that one away. What a great sequence by this defense so far. They've given him nowhere to go with the football. And they just have to make it stand up one more time because it appears that they've got their number. Can they not have a slip up here and allow the touchdown? They'll try on fourth. Here's Dalton. And that is incomplete. They had to go for it with such little time remaining. And the Jags take over in terrific field position. So now let's reset here, Charles. They do have two timeouts left, so they can stop the clock twice. This one's not quite over yet. No, and what you're doing on defense, you're going to use both timeouts, obviously. But you've got to call defenses are going to force the issue early, meaning you want that play over fast. You don't want to give them time to dance around in the backfield or run a wide sweep that will take off time. Blitz them, put pressure on them, make sure that play ends quickly so that you can go ahead and keep moving. Out comes the Jacksonville offense as they get set to take over here. And this one all over but the shouting, you might say. Now, there's one timeout remaining defensively, but probably no real need to use it here. Yeah, the only time they would use it, strictly for pride. This, in all probability, another run here on second and eight. They go jet sweep here with Shark. Looking for a crease, can't find one. Stopped at the line of scrimmage. Now the Bengals going to signal for their third and final timeout as they'll head to the sideline and talk over what to do next. And the line to gain here is the 37 on third down. This is Fournette. And the tackle going to be made at the 41 as they stop him a few yards short of the first. Four yards on the pickup there, but it's going to take him to fourth down. So on fourth down, out trots the kicker in a big spot here. So this will be spotted on the midfield logo. It's a 58-yard attempt. And this won't get there, won't be online either. It's no good, off to the right, and this score will stay right where it is. So it's a rare two-miss ball game for him now. Normally one of the more dependable guys you're going to find around. Very unlike him, one of the better kickers in the NFL. And I don't think there's anything wrong with him physically or mechanically. He's just having one of those games. A very good starting field position for the Bengals here as they come up first and 10, just shy of midfield at the 48. That's complete, Bernard. And they'll get him down as he's inside the 40. It's a gain of 13, and the Bengals have a first down. Down to seven seconds now, six. 56, Mike, 56, right there, right there. It's do or die for Dalton. And that is caught on the right sideline, but out of bounds, says the line judge. The throw took him a little too far at second down. Well, Charles, a pretty exhilarating finish to the end of this ball game. At the end, the Hail Mary prayers, though, they went unanswered. Could have won it, but couldn't get it done. Almost fell schoolyard or playground, didn't it? Yeah, you remember when you called that play? Everybody just go long <laughs> and try and find someone open. They gave it a shot, but unable to successfully complete it. So that'll do it for my partner, Charles Davis, and the best darn crew in the industry. I'm Brandon Gaunt. This has been a presentation of the NFL on EA Sports. With that, we say so long from Cincinnati.